So there, there was this thought that as the world opened up and the whole pet adoption craze faded, people just wouldn't be spending as much on the health care of their pets. Is that wrong? Is that not what's happening? Well, as you've seen throughout the year, and certainly in this quarter, we've had a strong, steady, uh, durable growth. This quarter with 10% uh, growth on the top line and 10% on the bottom line. And we're on track to have the best year ever for the company. And we believe, uh, pun intended, there's a long tail uh, to this trend. Um, I think, you know, people across the globe uh, are looking for, you know, comfort um, from their dogs. And I think that, you know, the trend of people spending more on their dogs, um, people spending more time with their dogs and this new generation and the role that pets play in their in their lives is a sustainable trend that's going to continue to uh, drive not just the industry, but Zoetis in the coming years. So the companion health part of your business was was strong, but livestock, not quite as much. And we're seeing that from some of your competitors as well. What's going on there? Because there was also a thought that this would be the strong part of the business when the world opened up and people were going back out to restaurants and to hotels and dining. So, so why has that been somewhat weaker? Well, it's been in line for us with our expectations. Um, uh, for us, we had a 2% decline in livestock in the quarter, a quarter, which is what we expected. Um, but it's a really complex story there for us. It really was being driven by the loss of exclusivity of some of our major products in livestock that happened this year, Draxon being the largest. But I think what's important around to understand as you think about livestock is we saw 7% growth in livestock for us in international, where these you know products had less of an effect. So we're still seeing the long-term trends of, you know, more urbanization, um, feeding the world, uh, and middle classes wanting more protein as a really a long-term trend that will continue to bring back livestock to its historic growth um, numbers. Historically, livestock grew about 4%, and we're confident that as we at Zoetis get sued through some of these loss of exclusivity, we'll be right back to those levels. So, Kristen, why is it that that's still doing better internationally? Are the, are the patents still not expired and, or, or the generics just don't have the same kind of penetration over there? Sure, it's a great question. Um, the species in livestock vary by market. So as you look at, you know, some of the markets around the world, whether that's poultry or fish, which had, you know, greater than 20 percent growth for us uh, in the quarter, you're starting to see some of those rebound much faster. And some of those products are obviously not as important there. But it's also the geographic diversification. We've long said one of the advantages of Zoetis is, you know, we have diversification by species, by geography, and by therapeutic areas. So when one is up in one place, it's down in another, et cetera. But all in all, we've consistently been able to deliver growth significantly above the market since we IPO'd. Is there any effect for you of the supply chain issues or transportation issues as a, as a large manufacturer that has to source a lot of ingredients to make these medicines? You know, one of the groups I'm incredibly proud of at Zoetis is our entire manufacturing and supply chain team. It has been really challenging over the last two years, but as you've seen in our numbers every quarter, we've been able to deliver. And that's been a lot of thought that they've put into managing that supply chain, increasing inventories, not just in finished goods, but in raw materials. Because many of the trends that you're seeing, whether it's the cost of you know shipping and the time it takes, um, or some of the increases in cost of raw materials, or even you know wages, supply chain challenges we're seeing, they've done a phenomenal job of managing, and just I'm incredibly proud. But we're staying, keeping a close eye on this. Obviously, we've been able to manage through it quite well, um, but it's just been a year where you just don't know where the next one's coming from. And, and how big could the the relatively new products in the osteoarthritis space get? Uh, well, we think if you look at pain in both dogs and cats, um, you know, we think it could be a one billion dollar market. So Labrella is um, our product for osteoarthritis in dogs, which, you know, for its first quarter ever did 15 million dollars in just a number of markets in Europe and Silencia for cats. And, you know, you know, most of that will be in the dog market, about 800 million, but 200 million will still be in cats. I mean, this is really a significant unmet medical need. And these products, which are monoclonal antibodies um, that treat it, have a great safety and efficacy profile. Um, and just as you talk to pet owners and vets that are using them, they're just so excited at the quality of life improvement that they're seeing in dogs and cats.